Hi everybody, my name is Margaret and I'm very excited to talk to you today about the instrument that I play, which is called the bassoon. First of all, the bassoon is a member of the woodwind family. That's a group of instruments that are that were originally made of wood, thus wood, and they are played by using our wind. So first I want to ask you to do something before we get too far into this. I'm going to ask you to do something really hard, and I hope that's okay with you. I'd like you to breathe. That's not that hard. You do that all the time, right? But let's just do that for one minute. One inhale and one exhale. That's what we do. That seems awfully simple. Hmm. Let's look a little further into this. One of the instruments in the woodwind family is called the flute. And it was originally made of wood. And we can tr pretend like we're playing our own flute if we happen to have an empty bottle around. I don't know if you've ever tried this, but if you breathe, just like you did, across the top of an open and empty bottle, you will probably get a sound like this. That's all I'm really doing, is breathing naturally. Hmm, is that all there is to playing an instrument, is just breathing? Well, some instruments require a little stronger breath than others. Let's talk about the bassoon. The bassoon requires much more air than the flute. Let's say you have a small piece of paper about this size and you try to keep it stuck to your hand. Oops, my hand's a little sticky. That doesn't work, does it? What happens if I blow against the paper? That's more like it, right? Is the amount of wind that I usually use to play the bassoon. Okay, so now we understand what wood wind means. I want to talk about producing a sound. We need much more than just blowing, right? We need something called a reed. Here is a bassoon reed. It's actually 
a piece of bamboo that has been growing in a marsh and cut into small pieces like this. And then with a knife, I am able to make that piece look like this. Two pieces that have been whittled down. When I attach these with, a wi with wires and form a tube, it ends up looking like this. That's how we make a sound. Okay, well that's a start, right? Hmm, Let's, let me take you through the steps. We have a reed. We have a mouthpiece that we put the reed on. That sounds pretty weird. Okay. What happens if we add another piece of tubing to it? How about this part of the bassoon? That's where that goes. And if I put my fingers over these holes, That's interesting, but I don't think I want to listen to that for very long. Let's add another two. How about this one? It has two tubes. One goes down one side of the bassoon and then curls around at the bottom like a U and comes up the other side. So I'll put one tube into this. Okay, we're getting lower. What happens if I add another tube to make it longer? Do you think the sound is going to go up or down? Let's add a very long tube. So what we've just learned is the longer the tube, the lower the sound. Well, can we go any lower than this, do you think? What happens if we keep adding length to tubes? Well, is there any instrument lower than the bassoon? Yes, there is. It's called the contra bassoon, and it's basically a bass bassoon. This is what the contra bassoon looks like. Just like the bassoon, we start with the reed and the mouthpiece, and we go all the way down, and then we turn around at the bottom, and then we come all the way back up. Oh! It looks like we got to go down again. All right, that's a very long tube. What do you think this might sound like? Mm. That is the contrabassoon, and that is the lowest member of the woodwind family.
say, Margaret, I, I'd love to play the bassoon, but, well, I really want to play the electric guitar. Hmm. Let me see if I can help you out with that. Once I get plugged in. I, too, can sound like an electric guitar.